on youtube and uncommon sense fam i'm back at you again with another fragrance review video my man Fred had said came up with this challenge a couple of weeks ago the reasons for the seasons or what i like to call the four seasons pick one fragrance per season and then we change it out based on the season and its suitability we're about to get into this thing let's go every single day season we're gonna hop right into spring so for the spring season we're gonna roll with Thierry Mugler's Amen Cryptomint. I did Cryptomint for a myriad of different reasons one reason is because it's slightly gourmand it's sweet it's fresh and I love the note mint on my skin so I really feel like springtime is one of the best times to bring about the virility of a scent that has a deep mint in it and it has some chocolate so mint and chocolate, they go pretty well together. This fragrance has the freshness and the sweetness of everything you would need for the spring season. In my experience, the longevity is roughly about six and a half hours on my skin throughout the day. You can get into this one and really get to enjoy this type of scent. In addition to the longevity being pretty good, the projection is pretty spot on too. I'd say roughly about one and a half to two feet of projection when applied to this area and across the back of the neck, you can't go wrong. A lot of folks complain about the atomizers on these, partially because they are refillable and the atomizers in the top. Leaves a little bit to be desired. I will not lie about that. It's not my favorite atomizer. You gotta give it a little body English to get it to get it in there right. So after about your second spray, you really get the feel of the atomizer. And as you can tell, I don't know if you guys can see, um, roughly about halfway through this one. And since it is a limited edition, you may have a hard time finding this one. I really go to this one when I want to smell like spring, when I want to smell like candy, when I want to smell fresh, because it gives you all of that wrapped up in one. You get a fresh gourmand treat. And for spring, this one actually beat out some real tough competition. It went up against Oscar de la Renta's Gentleman and Mont Blanc Emblem. So this remains victorious for spring. John Bravado's Artisan Blue is gonna be our summer season fragrance. It's fresh, it's clean, it's got that barbershop pop, kinda smells like Fasanaba Perome a little bit, but this one's a little bit more sharp. There's some citrus in there, and there's a clean note to it that I really can't explain. Um, so. If you haven't already, get your nose on this one. I really feel like this is an overlooked gem in the fragrance community. Jean Vervado's Artisan Blue actually beat out Versace Man Au Fresh and Tommy Bahama Set Sail St. Bart's. I believe this appeal is going to be just a little bit more universal for summer and it feels a little bit more like summer. Not necessarily smells like. It's more blue. It's more green as well, if that makes any sense. And it just really smells amazing. I'm Uncommon Sense and I want to bring you guys a few different things that you aren't seeing out there in the fragrance community. Uncommon Sense. That's what we do here. We try to bring you definitely different things that are not being talked about as much in the fragrance community. Coming in for fall. We have one that was recommended by my man Emitsu at Simply Put Scents, Fine Defendi. Good atomizer, great scent distribution. Mm, is really good stuff. Fine Defendi is a absolute staple. You can tell by the color of this juice. It's ambery, it's leathery, it's boozy, and it really coincides with the feel of fall. If I had to categorize this one, I would think a high grade cigar mixed with your favorite leather jacket. That's what this one smells like. Simply put, since Emitsu's review of this fragrance is the reason why I bought this fragrance. And I'm glad I listened to him because this did not disappoint. This one also makes my heavy hitters list. It lasts forever. If it ever gets on your clothes until you wash it, this is going to be there. This one coincides with cooler temperatures and shorter daylight hours, which inevitably means longer nighttime hours. And especially if you got that special someone, I'm sure they would not mind smelling this fragrance on you. 
Hannah Moray, him, and Halloween Man Shot were beat out by this one here. I've had some stiff competition with these, and this one just really blew those two out of the water when it comes in terms of performance, projection, and the scent. I just really had to roll with Fond Defending. Rolling right on into winter, we have a fragrance that is by a fragrance house that I've found myself getting more into as I'm growing it within my fragrance journey. That's going to be Azara Perome Nighttime. Dope bottle. I don't see or hear a lot about this in the fragrance community or fragcom, so I was more inclined to give it a little bit of shine time. On my channel is Uncommon Sense, we have to bring you something a little different and off the beaten path. So here we are with Azaro Perome Nighttime. When I first saw this fragrance, I was actually in Ross, in line, next up, and I saw this one kind of out the corner of my eye on the fragrance racks, and I knew it was a fragrance I hadn't heard a lot about. I was researching the notes as I was waiting to be called next. I was so intrigued, I hopped out of line to go get this fragrance, and only to get back in line maybe 10 people back. This was a blind buy for me. I gave it a shot, I looked at the notes, and I was like, you know what, the, what's the worst that could happen? It's for a 3.4 milliliter bottle, and it maybe cost me $25. I felt no harm, no foul, and I'm very glad that I took a risk on this one because it has some very interesting notes in it. Rhubarb, for one, which I don't have many fragrances with the note of rhubarb, and I wanted to give this one a shot. It has a bit of freshness in the beginning and some citrus, which I really dig. It's going to be strong enough to cut through the wintertime temperatures and really last. The interesting thing about this fragrance is that something tones up as malty on my skin. I really enjoy that for the simple fact that it's different enough that it can sit in my collection without disturbing anything else that I have, but also be a compliment. To be quite honest with you, this one kind of reminds me of being in the same vein as Halloween Man Shot, but there's a subtle difference, and I think it's that malty scent that I'm talking about, and possibly the rhubarb, the way it tones up on my skin, it really allows it to solidify a space in my collection of uncommon scents. This one actually beat out Kenneth Cole Black Bowl and Burberry London. So again, they were all up against some tough competition. Azara Perome Nighttime is the victor. Now, I know what you're probably saying. Oh, it's a nighttime fragrance. I really feel like this can be worn throughout the day as well. Its versatility allows it to actually be a all day type of fragrance. So even though it is technically chiefly for nighttime, I really feel like it can hold its own throughout the day from day to night. And especially during winter time, if you're in the Midwest or in the Northeast, you're going to be experiencing some shorter days. So anything beyond 3.30 or 4 o'clock is pretty much nighttime because it will be dark. Again, it's been your boy Uncommon Sense. I really appreciate you guys for sticking around with me and viewing my video of the four seasons and a fragrance for each season. So again, check out my man Frag Hair Said. It put me onto this category and I really want to do my take on the four seasons of fragrance for season. It's been your boy Uncommon Sense and till next time guys, I'm out.